term warfinger, beta bird, not to be confused with bay bird. In the former, I was a guest of the warfinger and stayed at his house, which was not located on the wharf. This boat is about to finish its docking maneuver. This is the sound of ILA, or simply the ILA, built in the late 1960s. She first went into service as a roll-on, roll-off passenger vessel on the west coast of Scotland before ultimately being sold to the government of Newfoundland and Labrador in 1981. It owes its agility to a single bow thruster. This boat, this boat is nearly 50 years old, older in fact than the pavement on the highway, Route 480, that connects the town and the wharf of Burjo to the Trans-Canada Highway. Wikipedia lists the cost of this boat at the time of its construction at 168,000 pounds sterling. In 1968, before the energy crises of the 1970s and before the inflation that followed, and then the inflation that followed in the 1980s, and then the inflation of 2008, adjusted for inflation, this boat would cost about six million pounds sterling today. This boat converted to Canadian dollars over 11 million. The ILA is not merely old and well-traveled. It also has the distinction of being the boat to provide temporary ferry service when most any other regular ferry in the province is out of service, which happens. But it so happens that I'm heading to the town of Ramia. And for as long as Ramia has been a community of car owners in general, they've had the ILA to thank for it. Such a long-suffering association might as well be called love. But before I go aboard, The town of Burjo is located approximately halfway along the southern coast of the island of Newfoundland, midway between the Buren Peninsula and Port of Basque, about 121 kilometers east of the latter. This is Burjo's fish plant, located on the body of water named the Short Reach, which is still operating periodically. To blatantly rip off Buddy Wass's name, when I came upon this moment of space time, every nerve fiber in me was screaming, Scenic! This is not only Burjo at its best. In the distance, on the horizon, is the archipelago where I'm headed. Some boats are named for a community. Not so for this vessel, a humble marine voyager, which provides service to the communities of Francois and Grey River from Burjo. If I was to name the boat, I call it the could be worse, though I cannot say that I've ever taken a trip on it. Could be worse also works as a place name in this province. As is noted at the top, the regular ferry for this service is the NV Gallipoli, a boat built to replace the ILA. Bigger, slightly faster, the Gallipoli also has a medical bay and more spacious accommodations in general. The question is, where is she? Outside the terminus, there's a large map of the region which details many of the nearby geographical features. The town of Ramia is situated on Northwest Island, which lies about 19 kilometers southeast of Burjo, about 10 nautical miles. The ferry generally makes the run in 12 nautical miles, and the Gallipoli makes about 12 knots when she's running on both engines. The Islay is slower, but according to those who sail it, is a slightly more seaworthy boat than the Gallipoli. Waiting on the wharf, I took another panoramic moments before the ferry rounded Boar Island on its way from Grey River to Burjo. Or is the island in the center part of the image. And I was frankly surprised by the appearance of a proper sailing vessel. Looks as if it's using full mains and a Genoa on the force deck. Well clear of the ILA and downwind to Leard, or colloquially, in the Lund.
rude at the wheel. Back to Vianna. Ocean's Breeze uh, is her name. She's a long liner of fame. She's got a fine, sturdy hull made of steel. But the glass didn't lie. Soon the snow started to fly until the whole ocean sky became a wall. And so my watch did begin. My Uncle Rube all a grin right into the teeth of a marine effect squall. With the boat loaded light set to steam for the night hell I got my first fright on the prowl as Uncle Rube took his ease in his cabin the breeze started to freeze from her stern to her bow once the waves turned the hills my guts they learned the thrills found as the ship crested over into the mine and to avoid a wreck I call all hands on deck right into the top of a marine effects With their hand balls and picks, sure the crew double quick, hacked at the ice nearly fast as it froze. But still the breeze crusted on. The breeze till the night she took on a list to her starboard port holes. I wrestled the wheel hard to port, cried for mercy just like a sport. Uncle Rue then appeared stern and tall, took the wheel from my hand, cried loosen all you can right into the teeth of a marine.
to uh, take this time since we're just going to be listening to the wind noise and engine for the uh, rest of the trip. Well, I'd offer a few candid reflections on the marine effects squall. One, I wrote the song following a come home year. It was a summer trip there, I think it might have been 2011. And it was for a music festival, maybe it was 2010. I went to a shed party rehearsal to get to know the people that I was going to be playing with for the weekend. And while drinking afterwards, one of those that were gathered toll of a harrowing night on a very bad uh, dragger, or the other way around, very bad night on a very old dragger. This was decades ago. The truth of his tale that survived is, and to the lyric that I wrote, is that prayer that happened the morning after. Two, I could tell tales about my own bad crossings on this ferry, but most of them will be at other people's expense, so there's no need to truly do that. But I did do the ice bucket challenge. Here's your uh, $10 gravel dispenser there, Troy. <laughs> so long sentence. Three, seriously, your sea mileage may vary. You find yourself anxious to take a trip to Ramia? Be warned, this is but a single mid-September example. And if the sea state, if the sea state gets, you know, rough enough, fit on the rough side, these boats roll like corks. And I will be the first to admit to you I've been sick on this boat more times in the past few years than I care to think about. Two. Not two times, but as well. If only I can stay on my pegs for the entire duration. Preferably on deck. So that I can at least have the winds to drown out the sound of myself singing to myself. To stave off on rushing nausea. Watching for wildlife. Anything else there is at all to see. Works wonders for me too. And if it's society you need, the Gallipoli has enough room for you and ten of your closest family members to play scat or 45s. Scat is also lucrative. I bet anyone aboard could play Texas Hold'em now. <sighs> I did this four. I did this music track quick and dirty, and still managed to do as little as possible to keep it more or less in time while seemingly extemporary. This is because I'm pleased to get to work like this, instead of outside, where I've been playing it infrequently, but happily. This is the slowest I've done, 120 BPM. And the guitar isn't tuned standard, at the moment. The recitation at the beginning, because reasons. One verse, copy, copy, copy. Five. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics are mine. Music is partly flavored by me. <laughs> I can't get through it when it laughing. The lyrics are mine. Music is partly flavored by music soundtrack selections. Think Gangs of New York meets David Mansfield. I'm well aware that waltzes are boring, stodgy affairs, but hey, I'm not altogether countrified like Seminar yet. John Prime would fill in another guitar in standard tuning. Six. The Gallipoli, speaking of seasickness, has lately been posting no smoking signs, 
everywhere on deck. And there goes yet another more or less placebo cause or cure for seasickness. I can relate a story or two about it, smoking on crossings from times past, including finding spots to sneakily enjoy one out of sight of authorities. The thing is, more or less, placebo. Smoking weed beforehand won't necessarily help either. I hastily decide I'm going to include an anecdotal evidence. This is from another person entirely. A man from the gas bay once told me that the one thing on earth that restored his body and soul from the very clutches of crippling nausea was to be inside of a hot wheelhouse, its interior fogged with dense cigarette smoke. From the gas bay. True. Seven. Speaking of hot wheelhouses, I did this crossing on this very boat, the Islay, one January not too many years ago. And so I got to see all of this. <sighs> yeah, I just blew my own mind reading. Oh, wow, what, what happened? What happened? Hermie, what happened? Seven. Speaking of hot wheelhouses, I did a crossing on this very boat, the Isle, one January, not too many years ago, and it just so happened I got to see the inside of this wheelhouse with all their nifty computerized doohickeys that could take the boat, now 46 years old this year, extensively refit. From dockside to dockside, no human required. The wheelhouse offers one heck of a view, but being so high up, the center of gravity means that the G-forces work better than double time on the old inner ear. All I wanted was to get outside, away from the heat of the cabin. Why make everyone else sick with the stench? Beach. But it isn't Dover. It's not Dover Beach. It's just, just the beach. It is merely a beach. Engulfing lungfuls of salt, icy air. It is wondrous how fluid dynamics turns projectile puke into atomized spray, just like a bucket of water. Afterward, I sat in that hot wheelhouse, sweat rolling off my skull. I could get used to it, really. 